Ten years ago, Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker reinvented the Spy series in groundbreaking ways. In this brief video looking back at the game, we'll cover what made the game special, and why its influence can still be felt today, arguably, in other titles like the FF7 remake and even consoles like the Nintendo Switch. Peace Walker surprised many MGS fans when it debuted in 2010 for not only jumping to the PSP platform, but by skewing much younger. There may not have been as much violence or outright adult themes as before, but Peace Walker was a pure and free expression of all the things that make life worth living, and in a way that didn't need to be any more graphic than it was. I am loyal to myself. Oh, is alive in Costa Rica. As I understand it, she was your commander, fought by your side. And that you killed her under orders from the CIA, thus surpassing her to become the hero known as Big Boss. Peace Walker portrayed the start of the character Big Boss's downfall, from the fresh-faced youth that we knew and loved him as in MGS3 Snake Eater, to the demented villain that we also knew he'd eventually become by the events of Metal Gear 1 and 2. Big Boss in Peace Walker struggles with PTSD from the tragic events at the end of MGS3. PTSD is identified in the official mission handbook of MGS1 as an important theme that they wanted to cover in that game but perhaps didn't really get a chance to nearly as well as they did in Peace Walker. In a way, Naked Snake, as we knew him in MGS3, died in 1964, and Peace Walker is just his brief taste of heaven before he'll spend the rest of his life in hell, something that will be detailed in MGSV, Ground Zeroes, and The Phantom Pain. Depicting a Cold War standoff in the 70s era of detente, Peace Walker brought MGS to Latin America, a new region for this series, focusing not only on the proxy conflicts fought there between Eastern and Western styles of imperialism, but also centering on the country of Costa Rica, one of the few in the world to have formally, apart from Japan, that is, renounced war in its constitution. Peace Walker used this backdrop to tackle big questions like why is there war at all? What does it mean to fight? And can peace truly last? America supported us all the same. It was because we practiced peaceful diplomacy. That is what I like to think. That's one way to approach it, sure. But there are countries out there who will use force no matter how bad it looks. Maybe so. I know my way of thinking probably looks naive to you. The game also went a long way towards depicting the culture of the period as carefree, sexually liberated, and naively idealistic. Topics were covered such as the oil crisis, the rise of artificial intelligence, and the new phase for the 1970s of nuclear deterrence, as it was transitioning to the new paradigm of proxy wars, guerrilla warfare, and special forces operations at the tail end of Vietnam. Snake's new outfit, Militaire Sans Frontières, are a bit utopian in fact. They think that, contrary to communism, which claims that it is the worker who the powers that be exploit to exist, that it is really the soldier who society needs to stay alive. By tossing aside all allegiances and patriotisms in the name of themselves, the mercenary country without a nation, MSF, stands to challenge everything about the Cold War status quo. Or so they think. Peace Walker was all about building MSF like a business, and that was where it really departed from prior MGSs. Like always, the game featured a linear main storyline, not to mention many of the same subversive style of twists, cackling villains, and giant robots. But unlike most other MGS games, Peace Walker used a metagame and hub world design, which meant that in between missions you could do all sorts of things to pass the time. It was a much more expansive vision of what an MGS could be, 
Using the general format of a TV show, Peace Walker provided a huge increase in player freedom and different types of gameplay that made the game a must-own on the PSP, as well as when the title was re-released in HD format on the PS3, only a year later. Okay, you Hey, that was great! Can't wait to see what else you can do! And when that HD port was included with the other MGS remasters on PS3, you could use a method of jumping back and forth from the Sony console to its handheld, which Kojima had devised and called transfaring. This innovation apparently inspired, at least in part, the Nintendo Switch, which was built entirely around using a similar idea. Meanwhile, the way that Peace Walker never really ended and allowed you to replay various levels in search of the content that you had missed would resemble a similar strategy to how Square would design, partly, their remake for FF7. Peace Walker also gave us a number of some of the best characters in the entire series, from reintroducing a much younger version of Solid Snake's drill sergeant, Master Miller, to Otacon's father, Huey, to Chico, Cecile, Amanda, and more. But the best character by far was Paz, a young pacifist and angel of peace who also harbored a dark storm of secrets. Through another key player in the game, Dr. Strangelove, Peace Walker made AI and unmanned weapons platforms central topics, particularly how they connected to the overall theme of peace. The game used this context of the earliest days of AI to question what exactly it is that distinguishes human beings from machines tackling many topics from the field of philosophy of mind while resolving this conflict with one of the single most beautiful sequences, arguably, in any MGS. The game would feature two endings as a nod to Pokemon Gold and Silver, while providing tons of secret content both in terms of weapons, items, and outfits, and collectible cassette tapes, some of which were only unlocked if you met the right requirements. Peace Walker paid homage to a large number of other games, too, from the very famous, like Mario, to the more obscure, like an old Konami arcade game, Puyan, as well as other PSP titles, like Monster Hunter. The switch from all fully rendered 3D cutscenes to beautifully rendered comic illustrations by Ashley Wood, who also illustrated the Metal Gear Solid digital comic, helped blur the line for Peace Walker between it being a game and digital comic. Peace Walker took the conceit of the PSP as a new kind of Sony Walkman, to amazing heights, making audio much more important than ever before for the franchise. In the game's many battles against capturable vehicles and armaments, as well as during its stealth sections and even its epic-length boss fights, Peace Walker taught the player aspects of asymmetrical guerrilla warfare, and it largely did so through sound. You had to use the terrain, but also listen carefully to the enemy, and plan ahead with limited supplies. Peace Walker was easily one of the greatest MGS games ever made. Hugely influential and profoundly moving, Peace Walker was the beginning of the end for MGS, one of the best sagas in video game history. The PSP may be obsolete now, and MGS may have come to an end, but Peace Walker will endure in our hearts as the game that taught us all that no matter how out of tune, it's our life to live, and we can only truly live it if we sing a song. It's not using its head. It's using... It's heart. This is the fate she chose for herself. <sighs> the boss's innocence has been proven. Do you hear it, Snake? Do you hear the boss's song? <laughs> you saw it. Didn't you? When you went to space, that there's beauty outside of battle. At last, I understand. In the end, it was you who put down your gun and chose instead to sing. They can all hear you. I know they can. 
and your will shall surely live on. That's what you wanted. So much that you gave up everything you had. But you couldn't achieve it. Isn't that right? And still, all you can do is sing. There's no peace to be found anywhere. And so, we can only keep on hoping. Hoping for the illusion we call. Bye. Uh -huh.